Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Neck Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. I'm going to talk about something that probably isn't talked about enough, but it's the dangers of sleeping upright. So I just want to show you some ultrasounds. And if you're somebody who sleeps upright, I'm just telling you it's very, very bad for you. And you have to, if, if you can't sleep supine laying flat, you have to figure out why. And I'll tell you some of the things that might be causing it. So probably the most important thing that all of us do for our health beside being loving, caring human beings and caring more about others than yourself. Loving God, loving yourself, loving your neighbor, right? That's the most important thing. But as far as like for physical health, the most important thing is to get restorative sleep. All day long, your body's breaking down and making metabolic waste products. So all the cells of the body are helping your body function good, but then there's waste products, right? You eat delicious food, but once or twice a day, you go to the bathroom and you dump out the waste products. So you gotta realize your cells are doing the same thing. Well, think about when would my brain rest? Like when would my brain get restored? The brain is the central computer of the body. Well, it happens during sleep. Like research has found that when you take a power nap or at nighttime, basically your, the fluid in your brain, it's similar to a washing machine where it goes whoosh and it goes whoosh, but that can only occur if your jugular veins are open. So in like 94% of us, I'm kind of estimating, but it's something like that. In 94% of us, the main ports of how our bodies are made that the drainage ports of the brain to get rid of all the waste products of all the metabolism from the brain. And there's an enormous amount of metabolism that's going on in the brain now because now the brain is subjected to millions of images because of cell phones and the internet, right? So the amount of waste products, toxic, poisonous waste products on the brain, how it gets out is through the internal jugular veins. And when you sleep upright, even just a little bit, 20 degrees, those jugular veins close off. And that means that the waste products can't get out of your brain, your brain pressure goes up, and you're at great risk of getting dementia, cognitive decline, memory problems, brain atrophy, and that isn't something I want. So I'm gonna give you some tidbits of how to how to get your brain to drain better so you know if you think about it like basically all mammals right we pretty much sleep we sleep right we we don't sleep where we're elevated right right so that kind of cute picture so here's nicole so she, here so we just we we took several people this is just one of them where see how she's laying flat that's the jugular vein then basically we had the cross-sectional area here of 69. Then just being upright a little bit, it went down to 43. So it's basically, what, 35%. Then when she's at 40 degrees, it's down to 15. So it's like 75%. And then eventually it closes off completely. During the night, your brain is supposed to flush toxins out. The brain pressure is supposed to go down, but that can only go down if the jugular veins are open. So when you sleep upright, the jugular veins are closed. So what are you to do if you can't sleep supine? Like you just can't sleep that way. Well, you have to figure out why. So the way we figure out why a person can't sleep just flat is by digital motion x-ray and upright cone beam. So one of the ways that the jugular vein gets blocked with laying down is if a person has elongated styloids. So the styloids are bones that go from the styloid process in front of the jugular. So when the person flexes, it closes off the jugular vein. So maybe if you're at home and you just can't sleep supine, Maybe just sleep on your side, try the right side, then try the left side, and extend your neck so your chin is away from your neck, and just see like five minutes at a time, like how is that? 
you know, how is that? And if you find that you're able to do that, you need to get checked out for elongated styloids. So the way we do it is an upright cone beam CT scan. And then if you want to find out whether the jugular veins are getting compressed by elongated styloids, you do a CT venogram of the head and the neck, or in our office, we do ultrasound evaluations of the jugular vein, but you have to do it at the atlas. You, you can't just do it in the mid, you have to do it in by, by the atlas. Then there's other reasons that a person has, they can't sleep supine, and that's because the cervical spine is complete, is always in the flex position. So you could be somebody who has cervical destructure or a reversal of the normal cervical curve. So again, if you lay on your side or you're extended, your head's extended, or you sleep with a pillow that has a cutout, so you're moving your atlas back, like instead of the curve being this way, it's this way, you know, when I extend my head, like I'm improving my normal cervical curve. Those would be two things to try, like try, if you don't wanna get a cervical pillow with a cutout, lay on your back, but have something supporting your neck and you're sleeping like this and just start at five minutes at a time and just see, does my head pressure go down? Like a lot of people who uh, sleep upright, they'll say, well, when they, when they lay down, it's just too much head pressure. They get a really terrible headache, right? Well, why does that occur? Because there's something blocking the jugular vein so then the fluid can't get out, the head pressure goes up, and then that can lead to a terrible, terrible headache. So you have to open up the jugular vein. So how to do that, lay like this or lay on your side. So that, that would be things that I would say might be helpful. And other things that can give clues that it's a neck problem is if you have clicking, popping, grinding of the neck, do you have neck tension? Or do you have other symptoms that are suggestive of ligamentous cervical instability, such as bloating, brain fog, cognitive decline, your memory's going, you have palpitations, you have difficulty swallowing, maybe your hearing isn't as good, you're getting blurry vision. All these things can be signs of ligamentous cervical instability or breakdown of the cervical curve. And if that pertains to you, then you need to get in a structural evaluation of the neck. And the way we do that is by a digital motion x-ray which is a movie camera picture while you move your neck and then like I say we do upright cone beam CT scan and if we find that it's a structural neck issue causing your symptomatology and why you can't lay flat then we do a program that involves correcting the neck curve with various exercises sometimes we have to put weights on people to correct the neck curve and obviously change the position of the, that they sleep in. So we do measurements of the jugular vein in different neck positions. Like I've even had people where they literally have to lay on their side, but they have to turn their head a, a certain way. Even when they're having dinner, right? Having dinner, like they might always have the spouse on their right side but when they turn their head to the right, the jugular vein is closed off, so they have to have the spouse you know, go on the left side. And then if there's ligamentous injury in the neck, and you are more likely to have it if you have clicking, popping, grinding in the neck, as well as neck tension, then we initiate prolotherapy. Prolotherapy involves injections into the ligaments that are injured, and it causes a thickening and tightening of the ligaments. And in follow-up evaluations of the neck with digital motion x-ray, we find that the amount of instability decreases and hopefully eventually gets resolved.